Chancellor, the Acting Vice Chancellor, members of the Governing Council and Senate, Professor Eka Braid, Vice Chancellor, Federal University of Lafayette, Nigeria, distinguished graduates and colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. I am in Durban today because I have been greatly honored and very fortunate to have been awarded the prestigious degree of Doctor of Science honoris causa by this great university, primarily for my work in combating river blindness, onchocerciasis in sub-Saharan Africa. I should like to take this opportunity to thank the Chancellor, the Council, and Senate for this great honor. To borrow the words of a famous British scientist, I have been recognized because I was lucky to stand on the shoulders of giants. In my case, the studied shoulder include those of a weary 19-year-old Nigerian mother, Agnes, standing hand in hand with brilliant African and international scientists, donors, the World Health Organization, the World Bank, committed politicians, dedicated non-governmental development organizations, and millions of ordinary Africans who have to cope with river blindness on a daily basis. Without the cooperation of the young Agnes and her willingness to express the sheer desperation of her plight, the horror she endured, and her sense of hopelessness when I met her in 1991, my work, the discovery of the importance of oncocecal skin lesions, and my contributions through the World Health Organization TDR research, highlighting the burden, especially for women, of incessant itching from skin lesions and the associated devastating social stigma may have gone unrecognized by the international community and the external experts. River blindness is a disease transmitted by small black flies that live near fast-flowing river in fertile farmlands in 30 countries of sub-Saharan Africa. In the early 1990s, 120 million Africans were at risk and 37 million infected. 1.5 million people were blind or visually impaired. Millions suffered from severe maddening itching leading to lack of sleep, disfiguring rashes, inability to work in farms, social stigma, infected school-age children lacked concentration in class. Most of you here will already know that there is a need for sub-Saharan Africa to rethink a fundamental approach for, to health systems delivery. As a distinguished colleague so succinctly put it in a recent article in The Lancet, despite billions of dollars of aid pouring into countries, delivery systems for health have to be retort. There is a need to re-examine healthcare service delivery models and strategies, and for each country in sub-Saharan Africa to identify customized delivery framework that will enable hard to reach populations to access health interventions. Without the, with the exemption of the eradication of smallpox, Sub-Saharan Africa continues to be greatly challenged in identifying people-centered health systems. The control of river blindness is the premier example of how to ensure remote African communities can access appropriate, effective health service delivery. The African Program for Onchocerciasis Control, APOC, which I was privileged enough to help set up, direct, and be part of for almost 20 years, is based on a singular simple tool, 
mass distribution of a safe and effective drug, ivermectin. APOC's unique delivery system, community-directed treatment, which I was instrumental in the promotion and scaling up, has demonstrated beyond measure the value of empowering communities and engaging a multinational partnership towards a common goal. Disease affected rural communities through this partnership manage what is viewed as many today as Africa's most successful of all public health interventions. The community directed system can perhaps be adapted and exploited by the new graduates and the new generations to advance health systems service delivery in Africa, especially among the poor. It is an approach in which the distribution and administration of drug to the community is undertaken by the community itself. Communities determine the appropriate time and method of drug distribution that ensures accessibility and maximum coverage in locations underserved by the health services. The approach is implemented by community-directed distributors, the CDDs, individuals chosen by their communities from among their peers, a bottom-up empowerment model. As a famous public health expert recently observed, the idea that rural communities should be involved in their own health, arranging to take and have their neighbors take this drug, ivermectin, that has been a kind of revolution in international public health. In our sub-region, health systems need good and effective delivery systems in which the end users are inclusively engaged and engaged in determining as well as operating those systems. That is the fundamental basis for the success of the river blindness control program in sub-Saharan Africa. Today, there is evidence of eliminating river blindness made possible because of community involvement. I strongly believe, ladies and gentlemen, that health providers in our countries will be working in circles forever unless there is a serious rethinking of health systems delivery. What is even more frightening is the fact that if we do not introduce and fully implement delivery systems, systems that are sustainable in the long term, all our investments and advances in controlling or even eliminating diseases will be lost.